I grew up in a Christian, quote Christian home. Neither of my parents were saved when I was younger, but they both got born again um, as adults. But I made a decision when I was seven, I'll say these briefly, um, nothing happened in my life. The preacher prayed. I didn't even pray, so of course I didn't get saved then. Um, I made a decision when I was about 13. Um, there was a time of great revival in our old church back home, and I basically wanted to make a decision because everybody else was, um, so people would know that I was, quote, a Christian, like they were. Um, and then about two years later, I made another decision during a revival service. Um, I was basically scared to go to hell. I mean, who isn't? But um, that can't be the only motivating factor, obviously. Um, during that experience, which I held on to for a long time, I focused on what I did, making sure I said the right things. Mm -hmm. There was nothing about what God could do. Um, and there was no life change, even though I didn't want to admit that for a long time. But for several years before, I'd never had assurance of my salvation, whether the last experience was real or not, because I knew that there were things in my life that looked a lot like a Christian should look, and I wanted to be like that. But there can't just be a, you know, a lifestyle out of thin air with no starting point. Mm -hmm. You can't just start up and be a person that you want to be, especially a Christian when there's no conversion experience. So I always doubted that, um, but finally last Sunday, two Sundays ago, when you were preaching, <laughs> which is funny, um, <laughs> God really began to deal with me and show me truth, and for once I allowed myself to listen, mainly. Um, so you had not listened, had, had he dealt with you about this before? Um, two other times that I can really recall over the last, what, like four years mm -hmm. or so. Um, but I just kind of pushed it to the back of my mind and said, you know, of course I'm saved, you know, and I would think back over that decision, make sure that I said everything right, mm. quote, um, and then would just go on with it. Um, but God showed me some things through the message, through First John, just the test of a Christian, and when I was real honest about it, I failed all of them, which was... Um, what were some of the things that he, he brought up to your heart in regards to that? Um, well about, you know, like, do you truly, I mean, a Christian truly loves God. If you love God, you obey Him. Mm -hmm. And um, God showed me that, quite honestly, I did what I wanted to with Him, which is not good. Hmm. Um, so He showed me, I just, I have my vintage notes, um, what you were preaching, about what sin does, saying that I'm the only law, I'm the only authority, and I'm the only God. And... Pretty much that was me, sadly enough. But that's everybody before they come to know Christ, um, whether we want to admit it or not. Mm. Um, that's right. So some other things that you said that really hit me was um, like the power of Christ to take away the penalty of sin and like the guilt of sin and power, like sin's power over us. And I never had that. And so just when you said about um, the reason that we don't have those things is because Christ's nature hasn't been put in us. Mm. And so when you said that, it was like, oh, it's kind of like the light bulb moment came mm. on. Like, that's why um, I'm not who I'm supposed to be if I am a Christian. So that was Sunday, and the next three days were like miserable. In what, in what sense were they miserable? Well, because I was under conviction. Um, all I could think about was, I'm lost, um, if I am, what do I need to do about it? And um, so I just, you know, pretty much thought about that the whole time. I'd read my Bible on my lunch breaks and, you know, think about it, pray, like, God, what do I need to do? Um, and God confirmed to me Sunday and Monday that I was lost. Monday's kind of when I got the pride out of my system. Because, you know, it's like, what a preacher's wife could say, what mm. is that? Um, mm. So, but God was like, who cares? And I was even like, who cares? You know, it's the most important thing. So, I got home from work and I couldn't do anything else. I was like, okay, I'm sick of dealing with this. Mm. I've got to, you know, God's got to fix it. Something's got to be done today mm. because I can't do anything else with my life, like schoolwork that I need to do or housework that I need to do because all I could think about was, you know, what am, what am I going to do? What's my deal? What's wrong with me? So, um, I, you know, I just kept reading the Bible and I was praying and I went back to your 
library and found this book. You know, I was like, Luke's got to have a book that's going <laughs> to help me out, um, just kind of as a guide along with the Word. Um, and so I began to read in that just about, well, I'll read Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. It's by grace you've been saved through faith, not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. Um, and just, um, I read through this book, So Great Salvation, whole parts of it just really um, explaining what grace and faith is, mm. which I've never really, I mean, you understand it, I guess, head knowledge from going to church and hearing people talk about it and what even what the world says grace or faith is, but um, to look at it biblically and to let God apply that to my life and teach that to me. Um, so, I, you know, just reading through the verse and actually seeing what that means, how you can be saved. So, um, you know, I was just like, what do I do? What do I do? And, um, so I'll, I will read one quote out of this book because this was kind of my dilemma. It says the hardest lesson for man to learn seems to be that he can do nothing whatsoever to aid God in his saving work. And so, you know, for me, I don't like for people to tell me that I can't or to say no or to say quit. And Basically, that's what God was saying. He was like, you can't. Mm. There's nothing that you can do. And um, so I just, you know, I prayed and I struggled for a long time. You know, it's of, I mean, it's not comical, but it is. Um, I was just like, okay, I just quit my life. <laughs> um, just that I can't do anything, you know? So I said, I just, I have faith to do what only you can do and to make me somebody new that I never had before. And um, I knew that he was God and he was, I mean, he would do what he said that he mm. would in his word. And that was all that I needed to do was to trust that and to you know give my life over to him to do what he wanted to with it. Um, you know, it just showed me that the problem was me, mm -hmm. um, me being a sinner. No matter what, like, quote, evil acts that we may do, I mean, we're all sinners at the core, and that's our problem. And I, I really understood that for the first time, that sin being what separates me from Christ. Mm -hmm. um, me being who I am. So, that was hard to side with God about, because... Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to say something's wrong with me. Yeah. Um, but there he is, and only God can fix it. So I just asked him to. I said, I need you to save me from myself mm. um, and change me. You know. So, uh, you know, I did that and prayed for a while. And, I mean, it was like a huge burden was lifted. This, the last, what, 10 days, mm -hmm. uh, 7 to 10 days, what has been different in your life than uh, the previous 24 years? Um, well, I have had a piece about my salvation and um, me being a, a child of God. Um, I've had a desire for the Word, not just to read it out of obligation or because I felt like I should or that I needed to, to be a better person or to, uh, really like this, to work towards mm. keeping your salvation yeah. or work towards um, God, you know, wanting to call me His child. Yeah. Um, I do it now because I want to and um, you know so that's been good this, things have been revealed to me through the scripture it's just been a lot more alive than it used to be don't assume that you're saved that you're Christian just because of some experience or because somebody told you that you are um, and if God's dealing with you about it don't push him away um, and seek him, seek you know godly counsel through the word or through another believer, and just pray. And you know, God says if you seek after me with all of your heart, you'll find me. Mm -hmm. So you have to believe that that's true because it is true. Um, so I would just say, you know, don't give up. I mean, let God, let God do a work in you that He wants to do, and um, just seek after Him. Don't push Him away. And we're just, uh, we praise God for what He's done and celebrate what, what Christ is doing in your life and what He will do through your life in the future. God's good. He is. Thank you.